Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. During this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that prevents us from trusting in God and loving each other. Since it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ on this night when he instituted this blessed meal for our salvation, it is proper that we complete our Lenten discipline by diligently examining ourselves, as St. Paul urges us to do. This holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us. For our benefit, he became man so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God and to deliver us, took upon himself our sin and the punishment we deserve so that we may more confidently believe this and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. It is as if he said, I became man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if he had said, I have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities. I give myself into death, shedding my blood to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins, and to comfort and to establish the New Testament, which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. And as a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, you dwell in Christ and Christ in you, and you have eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death, that he was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification giving him our most heartfelt thanks. We take up our cross and follow him, and according to his commandment, love one another as he loved us. As our Lord on this night exemplified this love by the washing of his disciples' feet, so we by our words and actions serve one another in love. For we are all one bread, we are one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread, and drink from this one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with the wine of many grapes, and the one bread from countless grains, so also we, being many, we are one body in Christ. Because of him, we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and in truth. May the almighty and merciful God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ by his Holy Spirit, accomplish this in us. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins, imploring God our Father for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. 
but I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful king. God be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. Please be seated.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Exodus, the 12th chapter. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, as a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, St. Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, 
you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand in honor of the Holy Gospel. A reading from Luke, the 22nd chapter. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. They said to him, Where will you have us prepare it? He said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters, and tell the master of that house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished. Prepare it there. And they went and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The disciples of Jesus throughout their three, three and a half years with the Lord saw a lot of unusual things, a lot of things that they probably would think were odd. Think about the story of the paralyzed man whose friends dug a hole in the roof so that he could be lowered down. I mean, seeing a miracle in and of itself is odd, but to have people digging a hole in the roof to lower him down, what a remarkable thing, even on top of the miracle that Jesus did. Or think of the other odd things. In the middle of a storm, Jesus is sleeping in a small boat, even though the disciples are fearful of drowning. And when they wake him up, accusing him of not being concerned with their danger, Jesus simply stands up, and rebukes the wind and the waves, and says, silence. And it was. And they were struck with fear. And they asked, who is this man that even the wind and the waves must obey him? They were used to things that were unusual and perhaps odd. Personally, I do not believe they were ready for Monday, Thursday. It was a day that was to celebrate for them the Passover. And the first thing that happens is Jesus comes in, and as they all start to lay down around the table, because that's how they ate, Jesus takes a towel and begins to wash the disciples' feet. And he goes around and he washes them all. And at the end, he looks at him and says, Do you understand what I've just done? You call me, Jesus says, Lord and Master, and indeed I am. But look what I just did. Goes with Jesus saying, doesn't it? Anyone who would be great in the kingdom of God must first become a slave to all. And then, John says, they reclined at table. And that makes the foot washing even more important, doesn't it? And then they begin the meal. And as they would eat, there would be a number of, of vessels of wine about them, cups that they would share. The first one would kind of be the pre-dinner wine, which they would talk. But then once the meal began, the host... Jesus would take the second cup. That's the cup of redemption, according to the rabbis a century or two later. It was the one in which when the cup was picked up and shared at the table, they were reminded of the story of the Exodus, their redemption from slavery, how they were freed at the Passover by the shedding of blood, how they passed through the waters of the Red Sea while the enemies were drowned. And they would hear that story year after year. Indeed, even, it even says in, in the Old Testament that when your children ask, what is this about? You would tell them of their redemption, of their salvation. And so now the disciples must think, ah, oh, we're on easy ground. We know what's going to happen. Jesus is taking this cup, and now we're going to hear the story of our nation kind of the Declaration of Independence, the stories of Valley Forge that we live with, that's what they were waiting for, to hear again the story. But this time Jesus does something different. He does something surprising. He changed things up completely. For what he told them was a story of redemption, but it was not the redemption merely of Israel coming through the Red Sea, not merely the story of the Passover. Instead, what he did at that point, as he took that first cup and told them to share it, he then told them the story of redemption. He took bread and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. And in the same way also, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it to them. Take, drink. 
This is my blood of the New Testament, shed for you for the remission of sins. You see what he did? Is he brought a new story to the table that night. He held the, the cup of redemption and passed it around and saying, I'm going to tell you the story and I will not drink again of this wine until they come into the kingdom. And what he did was he gave him the story of his death, of his body, of his life for the good of the world, for the forgiveness of sins. See, here's a new story of redemption. The story was miraculous in the Old Testament, but it is even far greater and more miraculous now. For what happens is now the world is saved. Now there is a new exodus, a new escape from sin and death and hell itself. Now there is a new water. It's the waters of baptism in which we have passed so that our enemies might die. See, this is the new story of redemption. This is the gift that God alone can give. It's the gift of Jesus. His body, his blood, for the forgiveness of sins. That is the new redemption. That is what we need. For our enemies are even more frightening than the enemies of slavery in Egypt. For the enemies we have are sin and death and the power of the devil. I mean, look how sin is. We've been here for, what, um, 35 minutes, just like this morning. We're keeping it nice and even, Pastor. I won't even ask you what your thoughts have been. Because I have no doubt that you're not too different than me and your thoughts have wandered and you have thought about things perhaps that are not very godly. That's the power of sin. And we've been redeemed. We have passed through the waters of baptism and we still fight that sin day in and day out, moment by moment. The story of redemption is the story of salvation from ourselves and the power of sin that rules in us and that we still battle even though we have been set free. This is the story of redemption, the cup of redemption that Jesus' body and blood bring to us. I mean, all we got to do is look to see how powerful the devil is, don't we? He is called in the New Testament, even after the resurrection of Jesus, he is called the princes, prince of this world, the prince of this age, the ruler of this time. And look what he's done. You see the chaos of judging people by pigmentation. We see the poverty that is wreaked in our land and in all, throughout the world. We see the selfishness that this encompasses people to the harm of others without a thought. And the redemption from this is not another political solution. It's our politics that get us where we are. No, it's to look to Christ. Do you see the enemies we face? We face death. That's inescapable. One time I read a story to some kids, and it was about sickness and illness and how sickness and illness comes to people. And I told them, my beard used to be red, but now look at it, it's white. It's because my body's dying. And one of them said, so why did you dye your beard? <laughs> no, I'm dying. That's the truth. And that's the inescapable fact, isn't it? And he has overcome even the enemy of death. We take the cup of salvation and we rejoice. It's the cup of our redemption. So when you come here tonight, it's also about who are our members and brothers and sisters to receive again that gift. I want you to know what you're doing. 
For what is the Lord's Supper? The Lord's Supper is the body and blood of Christ given with the bread and wine for us to eat and to drink. That's what it is. Christ himself is present here. Now, we learned those fancy words, and they're not really that fancy, but those words in confirmation, didn't we? Those uh, three little prepositions. Christ comes in with and under the bread and wine. And do you know what that means? It means we don't understand it. It means Jesus is present. We don't know how, but he gave his word that he will be here. And so he is. In the bread and wine, with the bread and wine, bodily he's here. Under the form of bread and wine, yes, Jesus is here. And you know what? It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. He is. That's the danger, isn't it? That's why you heard Paul warn about taking the bread and wine in unbelief, not believing that Christ was present, because it brings judgment upon the people of God. You see, this is coming to us. And what do we receive? Bread and wine, body and blood, inseparably united for this supper. So why? Well, you know the answer. It's for the forgiveness of sins. It's for our redemption. We receive this for our salvation. See, this is the promise that Christ has given. And this is the joy we have to come together around the supper. Is This is not just my salvation, but yours as well. We share it as a family of God. We eat and we drink. And through faith, we have salvation. How can eating and drinking do such great things? Well, indeed, it's not the eating and drinking alone. But it's trusting in the promise that was given to us by our Lord Jesus. It was given and shed for the remission of our sins. That's why we come. We come in faith. We come trusting in the word of God. We are faced with a deep and dark mystery. Nobody can explain it. We can only confess it. That's what mysteries force us to do. It forces us to confess a truth we cannot fully understand. Those of you who have been here for a while know my favorite example for a mystery. My wife loves me. I don't know why. I can come up with a whole boatload of reasons she must be crazy. But she loves me. That's a mystery. And it's hope and trust and faith because that's all that's left to be given. That is the mystery of this supper. Can't explain how Christ's body is present, but it is really there, whether you believe it or not. It's coming for our forgiveness because where Christ is present, so is our salvation. See, that's the gift we receive. That's the gift of this night. That Monday, Thursday, Christ picked up the cup of redemption. And tonight he gives us the cup of redemption. He comes to us in this bread and in this wine, and we find Jesus. And in Jesus we find our rescue from our own enemies, from sin and death and the power of the devil. And we must never forget that. He has come to us. And what do we receive? Well, we receive Jesus. We receive new life now. And we receive an eternity with our Jesus in heaven. For he has given to us the cup of salvation. Amen. May the peace of God which passes our understanding Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. To God alone be all glory. Amen. We worship the Lord now with our offerings.
Lord's Supper tonight, we'll stand in a semicircle. In fact, there's blue tape along the ground to show you approximately where to stand. So we'll all come down the center aisle, and you'll fill in one side, and this side will fill in the other side, and we'll do one table, and we'll dismiss you. When we get to the outside, it would be helpful if you walked around and came down the middle, if that's possible. Now you may stand for the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross. That where death arose, their life also might rise again. And that the serpent, who overcame by the tree of the garden, might likewise, by the tree of the cross, be overcome. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive and to renew and to strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers and deliver us and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory and honor and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death and rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom. And teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please be seated.
Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.